Hi guys, I'm Perry. Hi guys, I'm Nikki. And welcome back to the Divine Truth Experience channel. So, it's actually um, good that me and Perry are, are back recording. Um, as you may have seen, we've had a couple of guests on, um, on the channel uh, recently. Uh, one being my cousin Pete, and the other being Courtney, when she stayed over for a while with us from America. So that was awesome. It was great to actually actually meet her properly. Uh, Perry's known her for a while, haven't you? So yeah, seven or eight years. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and yeah, it was a, it was new for me to actually meet her and stuff. So no, it was awesome, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed those videos. Um, so I think today, what me and Perry are feeling to share about is our recent experiences with actually um, setting up and creating our own um, Divine Truth talk and presentation that we recently completed here in London. And just, we really want to share with you the, the kind of challenges that came up for us, what we faced and, you know, the, the, types of, um, the types of feelings and learning experiences we actually went through in order to produce what we did. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what we're going to talk to you uh, today about. Um, so, yeah, I guess we, where should we start? Yeah, I think um, what I'd like, to, one of the big, big things that I want to get across in, in this video is just about kind of how, how your life changes when you start to engage in your passions, um, your passions and your desires. And we hear it thrown around a lot, you know, if you've been following the divine truth. And in, in all areas of life, anyway, anyone who's successful, We'll talk about following your dreams and following your passions. Uh, but I just wonder like how many of us actually go and do that. And um, I just saw a, a divine truth clip the other day of Jesus saying that what he learned from children was just seeing how much children get so passionate about their lives. And that's one of the things that he was humble enough to come across and learn even from, uh, from little children. Um, and so this experience that we had creating the seminar just brought up so many different emotions for us and one of them was definitely passion yeah 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 i think um the way the seminar came about initially was i was actually um for the first time i was wanting to properly get into some of my money uh, injuries basically and um as i was kind of praying to god and doing a bit of journaling i uh, i realized that the money I receive through donations, I haven't really been spending um, or using them uh, as much as maybe you know someone who's more in harmony with um, God's truth and love would do, uh, based on my own fears. And like, um, just as an example, one of my um, issues with money is that I like to kind of have almost a little buffer level of money, so I feel like. I've got a bit there just in case things get really tough. <laughs> um, and um, I was just thinking that um, the donations I received, um, I haven't really spent it on actually helping us share God's truth is better, basically, more so than we're, what we're currently doing. So, you know, as I was reflecting and going through that, that stuff, um, I actually got to... Uh, understand a couple of things I made quite a few big realizations and I, I realized like you know al although um, the people who um, who are donating they're being generous and that is awesome that uh, people do want to donate for what we're doing I was kind of seeing it as also I started realizing that hold on a second this is money that God's kind of making available to me and it's no use of it just sitting there in my um, in my account basically and um, and so I basically I realized like I was thinking what else could we do more than what we're doing now um, to actually you know take things up a level to be more in our desires and to help spread God's truth and so I, I quickly realized I was like oh I need to start creating some experiments here and I realized one of the first things that came to me when I was reflecting was why haven't we done a divine truth talk or presentation in London? Like, why that? And Perry, you mentioned it to me before, didn't you? You were like, oh, maybe should we do one? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been feeling for, for about a year, actually, that at some point in the future, I'll be doing talks and seminars. And um, what I started to do about a year ago in my previous job was um, I started to take on every opportunity where I could get to present in front of people. Um, just so I could brush up my skills and get through the fears of 
public speaking and it was re it was really cool how it worked out so I had my little prayer I was just like okay God, I've got this fear of public uh, public speaking um, you know can you help me get through that and I, I don't know how long it was after that prayer but it wasn't too long that um, one of the PRs at work was chatting to someone and they wanted the, the director to do some presentations. And I overheard her saying, oh, sorry, he's not available. Um, and I was next to her and I just nudged her and I was like, I'll do it. And then she looked at me and she said, oh, would you talk about, about it was about um, uh, health and nutrition and veganism. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So she was like, cool. So she told this guy on the phone, oh, Perry's gonna do the set, uh, we'll do the presentation instead of the director. So that was my first time and that I got to um, start experimenting in public speaking. And then what happened after that was I got another opportunity, another opportunity. And in the end, I did a series of about 10 different talks um, all about food and nutrition. And then from that, um, I got to speak at a festival as well, um, talking about food and nutrition again. And that was in front of about 50 people. Um, so I got used again to kind of like the crowds gathering feeling all the projections coming at me. Even though it wasn't related to Divine Truth, I still got to experience that. Um, and then a few, uh, a few months later, I got invited to a, a picnic and I had a 15 minute slot to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. And so um, I talked about Divine Truth and that just went down amazingly. And then off the back of that, they invited me to then come and do a talk for an hour that was in the winter. Um, again, talking about divine truth. So I had little build-up um, progressions of speaking in front of people. So when I mentioned to Nikki, I think I think Nikki still had some slight fears about yeah. talking in front of people. I still do as well. Yeah. Like I still still do that. Yeah. And so it was really great that when we got the idea to to do the seminar, like it finally came through. And um, once we all, because Pete was with us as well when we agreed to do it. Just like, it was like all systems go, like we just got really excited about it. Yeah. And that was the start of the process. Yeah, and I think before, yeah. uh, when we spoke about maybe doing a seminar, because of my fear, I was like, yeah, no, like, not yet, not yet. Like, I was just feeling like I wasn't ready, but I realized that was just an excuse. And I was yeah. realizing that it's the right thing to do. And when I started reflecting and praying about my money injuries, I quickly realized that you know, like my choice to not like do um, talks, like Same. public talks, mm -hmm. is because of my fear of actually talking in front of loads of people. And it's not really like my fear about talking about divine truth because I love divine truth. It's just that just general fear of talking in front of loads of people and everyone's on you and you know, you're feeling their emotions and projections coming at you and stuff. So, uh, I just realized like the loving thing to do is to go ahead and do it just because we're thinking and talking about what we actually want to do and what our long-term goals are. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, after creating the forum, starting up our YouTube channel, talking to a camera just between the two of us, it was almost like the next logical step was to create a talk whereby we can just talk like this, but in front of loads of people. And in the hope that obviously as we can share as much truth as we can, um, that those people will uh, benefit in, 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 in attendance there in person rather than just, you know, someone watching through YouTube. So, yeah, it was just like, okay, like, you know, this is what I want to do in my life. I know that. And now it's time. I just need to take the action, go through with it, and then just let everything happen, let all the emotions come up, you know, sort you go through all of this uh, preparation process with setting seminars up and the, sorting out the equipment. And, um, and also it was good as well because we learned about working together to like me, Perry and Pete um, to actually create this goal of what we wanted to achieve for the seminar. I just want to add also what I thought was really great was um, a lot of the stuff Jesus was presenting in the assistance groups, which was around the time we were planning our seminar. A lot of the things, that, one of the main messages that I got from it was about taking action in your passions and in your desires. And I just, thought that was, mm. it was so current for what we were going through. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that as well about taking the action. Yeah, and, and that, this is one key lesson that I feel we both learned about um, like emotions and action. And it's all obviously part of the will, of the will in your soul. Um, however, I've learned that um, if you kind of 
reflect first and think what you actually want to do with your life. Where or where do your passions lie? And then you start thinking of okay, like you know, what kind of actions can I take um, to help achieve this goal? And then when you think okay, that makes sense. It's in harmony with what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then it's just the case of just going ahead and just taking that action. And then you don't even need to worry about like thinking oh. I need to feel this emotion first. I need to feel my fear of public speaking before I even choose to actually engage in that kind of event. And we realize that when you take that action, it's like it pushes you through and instantly like all your fears and emotions start coming up and you don't actually even need to really sit down and like pray for them to come up because they're just coming up because you know this inevitable action is coming. And so all your fears and all tons of emotion just come up and it is the way I, I feel that God would like all of us to progress and, and learn by taking these actions and letting all these emotions come up and dealing with them, not like avoiding them and shutting them down because we could have easily done that on the lead up to it. Mm-hmm. But we're like, no, hold on a second. Let's, you know, let our emotions come up when they do and just try and be humble to the whole uh, experience of it and see how things turn out. So I guess that's what we did, didn't we, really? Yeah, and and the beautiful thing that I discovered as well was even though there was like a level of fear, there was also a really level of excitement as well. So you have like this excitement and fear together, <laughs> which felt quite similar. Yeah, you don't know what's what. You don't know what you feel. <laughs> you don't hear. And, um, you know, and then you're just going for it. And, I mean, the beautiful thing also for us is like we're so passionate about divine truth and, you know, the impact we feel it will have on the world. That, that, that some of the feelings are just like really overwhelming on, 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 on the information that they're gonna get to present as well. So so it was uh, yeah it was a it was a really big deal and I'm glad so happy that we uh, decided to do it. Yeah, and yeah. one really cool thing that we kind of realised even more so than what we did before was just how much work Jesus and Mary do in terms of the preparation of all of these talks and assistance groups that they go through in order to deliver the material in the way they want to deliver it that will have the most impact and benefit Mm. to the people who are listening to that material and that was obviously one of the biggest things that we had to um, kind of focus our attention on whilst we're obviously setting up the seminar from that regard so you know we, we we sat down and thought about you know, what we could each add to the presentation, what we wanted uh, to get across, the actual message we wanted to get across to people, um, you know, these really key things that we really wanted to, um, you know, share with the audience, basically. Yeah, and we also don't want to overstretch ourselves as well, so we had to be quite humble to the information and the knowledge that we know, that we know, and not go too far into areas <laughs> where we'd be kind of just- Guessing a bit. Guessing, or just that we know in theory. So it was really important for us that we wanted to talk from personal experience. And so we did like an intro into Divine Truth and just kept within those boundaries. And it was just like Nick was saying, it was such an awesome experience planning the seminar. And we got like so much joy from that. Yeah, uh, and I think you, you actually raised such a key thing, mate, because like one of the lessons I learned when administering the forum is that I started over stretching myself and, you know, tried guessing things with people and, um, you know, like Mary and Mary gave me some great feedback. She's like, she's like, Nikki, you're not, um, you know, you, you're kind of not at the level that Jesus is that way. You can pinpoint, um, you know, that emotion happened and that cause of emotion came to them when they were three years old in the bathroom when their dad did this to them. <laughs> she was like, you know, you, you're not at that level yet, you're just not. So just focus on what you do know, share that with people, talk more from your own experiences um, and then you can't go too far wrong really. Um, so that was just a key, key thing. Yeah, I mean, we weren't going into the seminar thinking, right, we're going to be able to you know, help people on a personal level and, and discuss their issues. It was literally, we just wanted to present information. Mm. And if someone did ask a question and we felt like we could answer it, we would answer it. Then, uh, then we'd go ahead and do it. So, um, yeah, so all in all, it was just such a, a, a great experience. Um, and we, yeah. you know, we plan to do more of them as well in yeah. the future. Yeah, I think one 
awesome thing is we didn't just go ahead with our desires and passions and obviously then the emotions came up as well but also what happened is that we each of us learned a lot of new skills mm. that we didn't necessarily know or or develop beforehand so for example the technology and the equipment we had to think of so many more considerations on that regard and we had to think of the sound equipment um, what actually we needed on top of the equipment we'd already purchased in order to create the the right level of sound at the event so that everything could get recorded properly and because we, we realized that one of the most important things is just trying to document and record as much as we can and get it out there uh, just so that it's a reference not just for ourselves but for a lot of people and if they can learn from you know what we're doing then that is like the best thing for us mm -hmm. it's like the best thing and it's you know it's not really about as much about just ourselves and that you know thinking oh like this is us we're in our passions we're doing our seminar that's great and forget everyone else it was like a lot a lot of it is about like trying to help others and helping others see things in action and what occurs when you're taking these actions and yeah and whatnot so and i think also, also another skill that we learned apart from logistics was actually um, like how to teach how to teach so from the point of like we, we know this information it's in our hearts but a lot of the stuff is it, it's it, i think teaching is such a skill in itself as well and if there's teachers out there you'll you'll know what i mean um so it's like we had to sit down and look at how we were going to present the information. Would we use the whiteboard? Would we just talk? Um, so there was a quite a lot of thought which came into it. And, um, you know, we didn't know who was going to turn up. Was it people who know all the information <laughs> yeah. already in theory? Um, so it felt like maybe we were just present, presenting stuff people already knew. Um, and we had to consider if there was complete new people coming, like how would we then present the material? Um, you know, would we have to go right back to basics? Um, how, how, how deep can we go with the teaching? So there was a lot of considerations and boundaries that we were thinking about also about the people who were coming as well. Yeah. So that took quite a bit of time and a bit of skill and, and, and learning. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And on top of that as well, it was about the time constraints we had because mm. uh, we hired a haul out and there was another group coming in after us. So we did have a deadline, you know, whereby we'd, we'd basically have to finish up and get out you know, pack away and get out before the next group comes in. So we we're thinking, okay, we can't obviously go into as much depth as pos as we can as we want to go into in this initial introductory talk that we're planning on doing. So let's just give a broad overview of the most important thing. So um, just a brief intro to, to ourselves, as Perry mentioned before, and then just a very quick um, intro into Divine Truth, what it is. And then I spoke a little bit about God um, and who God is, um, the personal relationship with God and receiving God's love and truth. And then you spoke about... I spoke about um, our, our soul and also the whole soul, so it meant our soul mate. Yeah. Um, and the incarnation process and what happens there. And then uh, Pete, he talked about truth, love and uh, humility. Yeah. So kind of putting all that together, we only had 15 minutes each to deliver. <laughs> that talk um, obviously you know you've seen if you've seen Jesus presentations each one of those in itself is hours and hours and hours so yeah it was uh, yeah it was a, a tough task but we we got through it and uh, yeah we're really happy yeah, yeah yeah it was it was just such a great learning experience for all of us and uh, I know by speaking with the people who are in attendance they really enjoyed it as well and um, I, I think it was of benefit to those guys, um, so that was awesome. Um, and I guess there's so many things we actually learned in the whole process, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, I think also as well, what happened was that our desire grew stronger for what we wanted to do. So afterwards, we just got so excited. <laughs> we were just like buzzing <laughs> and like on a high, um, and it just kind of like increased our desire even more to want to do more. And so that's what we will be doing in the future. Nick and I have just been planning. Um, how are we going to progress in the future in terms of delivering divine truth? And um, so that's really exciting to, to look forward to. And um, yeah, we've just been, Nick and I have just been saying over the last few days that our souls feel a lot more buoyant, there's, there's, there's a lot more joy coming into it. Law of attractions have really enhanced and speeded up as well from being in our desires. Um, off the back of doing that seminar, 
there was a, a friend of mine who was at, at one of, who I met um, the previous year. He was holding a, a poetry night and um, he invited Nikki and I to come and talk there. So off the back of being in our desires, doing our talk, we got invited to then go and do another talk at okay. somebody else's event. And we had a half an hour slot again just to present um, about divine truth. And it was such a mixed crowd from all different faiths yeah. and religions and spiritual teachings. Um, and then Nikki and I delivered our half an hour talk and we, it was a lot of questions and answers. Um, so we, we, we felt that the people in the crowd, they got to hear something that they hadn't, that they hadn't heard before. And we could feel that as well. And it, yeah. That was really beautiful to deliver the message to people who haven't considered some of the things that we do on the Divine Love Path. So. Yeah, one thing I realised at that talk, that second talk we were invited to, um, was that um, like the people in the attendance, they were just so hungry mm. to know more. And the half an hour just seemed like nothing, basically. It went, in, it went like a flash. Yeah. And by, by, by the end of it, we were like, wow, we could have actually spoken with these people for so much longer. And there was a lot of engagement. Um, as Perry mentioned, there was a lot of different faiths there. There were Christians, there were Muslims there, there were atheists, there were agnostics. So it was a real mix of people. And there were all different ages as well. It was really amazing, actually, um, to experience that and to almost kind of find like the points of contact with each group of people in the audience and try and like share the truth of what we've learned with them and something that they can then get engaged with as well um, so that was really great actually yeah just to, about, about the hunger that they had when we asked we did a five minute intro each and then we said has anybody got any questions and then just, everyone just put their hands up <laughs> yeah, yeah so many questions for us and like Nick said we could have gone on, on there for hours and hours we just had just this half an hour slot uh, and then even afterwards when we talked, people were coming up to us asking us more questions. So it's just, just showing us again, like, you know, the world is like ready for this information. Yeah. It's just people going out there and doing it. So <laughs> yeah, go out and do it if you guys, if anyone wants to, you know, engage in, in, in their own passion, desires in regards to sharing truth, like I just highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I think um, like one of the key things I like to get across to people is that we were both still a bit nervous and a bit, you know, a bit of fear was there just before both talks. And we, we didn't let that stop us. We were just thinking to ourselves, right, no, this is what we want to do. Let's just do it. And to be honest, in that first talk of ours that we created, so many fears came up for me. I was thinking, oh, what if no one turns up? How's that going to make me feel? It's going to make me feel like a, a fool and that I'm just worthless and all of this. And then I was thinking, what if tons of people turn up? I won't be able to handle that. Like, <laughs> so I had fears on both sides. Then I had all these other fears of my own capabilities to share what I've learned with people in a way that they can take from the um, from what I share with them, and that will help them. And you know, all these things that came up that wouldn't have come up for me if I hadn't taken that action. And very quickly on both talks. After the first minute when we were up there, like the fear just, um, it was like because we were so much in like, passion and desire at that point, our fear just wasn't there. And we were just so like locked into what we wanted to share with people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was like amazing and it went by so quickly as a result. Yeah, it's a bit like uh, Nick, have you, when you do before a football game, you get a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're on the pitch, that's, That's it. it. Yeah. No, more, no more fear. You're just in the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it just came to me then when you were speaking about the nerves before and then being on the on set. It's just, it's just like that. So uh, there was a little side note there. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you see, this is one other thing I learned after the talks is that okay, I, I'm not going to mention a few because I'm not sure, but yeah. I was like, for me, okay, my desire is not pure to be sharing divine truth as you know, from God's perspective, because there's still some fear mixed in there. And I realized that God and my guide was kind of wanting me to go ahead and do this in order to help purify my desire to re start releasing some of these fears I have of public speaking, um, just so that then 
you know, I just constantly be wanting to do these talks everywhere and, and whatnot. Just as, and and by releasing the fears, you you've got more capacity within yourself to share yourself with more freedom and to share what you do actually know. What rather than worrying about all of these different factors. So that was another awesome thing that I learned afterwards when I was reflecting on and evaluating the whole experience, really. Yeah, and you just reminded me as well, like, um, two things, really. One, the importance of sharing yourself. Like, it's just so amazing. Um, and I think a lot of people in the world don't do that. And that's because of fears of what people would think. And um, there's so much joy and freedom in when you just saying how you feel and, uh, and what you believe in and all these things and not worrying about what projections are, what people are going to say back. Um, oh, I forgot my second point. Okay, well, I've got a point anyway. All right. So what was, was my second point? At the um, second talk that we had where there was nobody, well, where no one there was ever came across divine truth, one of the first things we shared with everyone after we just introduced ourselves very briefly was that are you going to say about Jesus and Mary? Yeah. <laughs> that was my second part of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was that. that was my second yeah, it was literally one of the first things we said was that, okay, we, um, we are following these set of teachings that we believe to be God's truth. And we also uh, know that Jesus and Mary are back on earth uh, to teach these truths again with the world. And that was one of the first things we did say. So we gave everyone full disclosure about the teachings, where they've come from, just so that, you know, like, we don't want to hide that from people. And I don't feel any need to hide that. Like, I, I'm not actually worried anymore about sharing pe with people that I believe Jesus and Mary are back because I just know it to be true now. It's just, and when you know something to be true, when you received it from God, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, I, it doesn't matter to me what anyone thinks then about that part of what I've shared because I know that to be true. Mm -hmm. And and then also, like, one of the things that I realised was when I first came across the Divine Truth teachings, I wasn't so hung up on Jesus being Jesus. I was more hung, I was more, um, like, I was more attracted to the whole teachings because I was thinking, okay, if, if this guy is Jesus, he is so brave and he's got so much courage to actually share who he is with people, knowing that, almost everyone is going to probably react in a negative way to him. And so that was one of my draws to actually listening further um, Divine Truth material. And then I realised that if we just share that what the truth with people, somebody else in that audience, someone who's open to the truth, they won't think like that. They won't be trying to find all of these reasons why he's not. They'll be more drawn to like, oh, okay, these guys are maybe, these guys have been courageous by sharing that they, they feel Jesus is back on earth. I want to look into that, I want to investigate that. So that was something I learned. I just remembered something, I'll confess, that wasn't my number two. Okay. It was probably my number three though. I, mean, <laughs> okay. I have been thinking about it. My yeah. number two was, uh, don't forget it again, um, about what I learned through this experience was, it started to become not about me, it was yeah. kind of about getting the teachings across. So that was just another thing that I realized. When I was sharing myself, and it was less about, you know, what will, pe what will people think of me? It was like my, my desire to want to get the truth out, like, was stronger than what will people think about me. So it sort of just starts to become, like, all about God and all about the teachings. And if, if, if God wants to use me to be able to do that, and if that's my passion, then that's just brilliant. Um, but the most important thing is just getting the information out there, uh, engaging with people and stimulating that desire for others just because I know how much benefit it brings um, to a person's life. So yeah. that was one number two. Number three, that was definitely on my mind yeah. though, like the feeling, because a lot of the things is like, well, cause point number one was fully expressing yourself. So obviously if you're into divine truth, you're gonna have to at some point mention Jesus and Mary. And I think that closes a lot of people down straight away. And through this like year of like, but just short of a year of knowing Nick, there's been so many situations in where Nick and I have had to, talk about Jesus and Mary. Um, even when we opened our, well, I don't know if it was the same for you, but when I opened my bank account to receive the donations, you know, I had to state what the donations were, why I wanted to open my bank account. So obviously 
that opened another discussion and then because I wanted to be in truth I had to I wanted to tell them it was about sharing divine truth and then she asked me well, what's divine truth so then obviously then next my answer was about Jesus and Mary and um, and, 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 and this woman who opposite me was up and she just got totally into it so you just never know when you share yourself we the the the, um, the appointment was for an hour I was there for two hours it was about half an hour talking about my bank account <laughs> <laughs> and another hour and a half, she was asking me all these questions about her childhood and what this means. And so I, there was an opportunity there to talk about the teachings. So you just never know yeah. when you share yourself what can happen and how you can get the teachings out. Yeah. And, yeah. and also now we've both found that when we just, when someone asks us about what kind of spiritual uh, path are you on, it's like one of the first things we say. And we've realized that now people are just intrigued. They want to know, like they want to keep asking questions rather than, going oh, oh I don't want to talk to this weirdo like it, it happened to me before like when I mentioned it because I was scared I had fear about what they may think if I was to say it. but now I've got no fear about it I'm not attracting like those responses anymore and I'm now attracting people who want to ask more about it mm. so like it is awesome it is the best thing really like it because it is just us being ourselves and sharing what we know to be true and um, and it just gives everyone else the opportunity to decide for themselves what they want to do with what we share to them. And a great thing with that is you're not hung up on what they think afterwards either. Yeah. You just leave it with them <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, I remember at the beginning I, I kind of like wanted them to take it on, wanted them to believe it. Scared that they would think I was nuts, like so many fears. Where now, just because I know it's true, I'll just say how it is, leave it with them. And if they want to take it, they can. And if they don't, then that's fine with me as well. Just mm -hmm. through the progression that I've gone over the years, you, you just start to feel that way. It's uh, it's been it's interesting. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking if there's if there's anything else that we could potentially share about our experience. Um, so yeah, I mean a, a, a lot of stuff. Um, there are a lot of challenges with the technology, like we mentioned before, um, and we didn't actually realise how much harder or more uh, complicated the video editing process is for seminars because there's two cameras involved you've got the sound stuff trying to fix all the sound levels and um, you know people's microphones they're all at different ranges and it, it you know it was a big challenge but now it's great because we've actually gone through that process and we've learned more about that as well so the more we've we become efficient in that the more we'll be able to focus on creating more um, events and being in a passions further and then getting all of that information out there on you know the rel all the different media outlets so our youtube channel for example mm -hmm. and it's all just kind of it all just leads on to further things as you keep going in your desires yeah it's like a there's a there's a, a law in creation uh, i chatted with jesus about this and he was like yeah of course there's laws in creation and no, we didn't dig deep too much into that but we've just been experiencing um, and you'll see it with many kind of like famous people that started off small and then they progressed so I think kind of what I'd want to probably summarize for this video is to if you don't know what your passions are just to experiment and follow your passions I remember when I, since I've been growing up <laughs> my mum's always told me Perry you're always changing from one thing to another you always and that's because I was, I've just been looking all the time for different things to do and what excite me. I've, 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 I've tried so many different sports, I've tried so many different um, kind of spiritual practices, eating habits. I'm just like constantly looking for different things to do. And um, so now I've, I've definitely found my passion and I know that's what I'm going for. So find out what your passion is if you don't know what it is. And then, then the next step is to take actions to then follow that passion, which will bring you know certain challenges and fears and stuff like that but yeah. don't let that stop you keep on going um yeah yeah i think the, the one thing i want to get across to everyone yeah. is just how much joy you feel when you're being yourself <laughs> like i cannot tell you how amazing it is you know when you've got all these fears about being yourself and when you go through and get out of the other end after the experience you just feel so much joy it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe we actually did that. Like, I can't believe, you know, I stood up in front of loads of like, people and just shared what I know with everyone. 
and I know you've mm -hmm. felt the same as well. And I just want to get across to people it's just the best when you are doing that, you are being yourself and and then also you can feel more, you, you feel a lot more closer to who you are as a person. You, you, you can feel God more in it through the whole process. It makes you want to pray to God more as well because you want God's assistance as much as possible. You, get, you feel your guide helping you at times and you can really feel when certain assistance comes in from, from your guide. And, and yeah, I mean, we're just in the most exciting time ever. And I'm just so happy and grateful that I'm here on earth now. At the same time, Jesus and Mary are back. I just, I can't believe how awesome that is, that, how that's worked out and what we can actually do to help everyone else and, and then also to be of service to God because that's what you kind of want to do for God because yeah. of you know how much God's done for you. Um, and it's not like an addictive thing saying, oh, God's given me love, so now I'm going to do all this for God. It's because when you receive God's love, it, it, you, you're shocked by it because it's a gift. It's like, oh, my goodness, like, God like, gave me some love. And it's like, oh, my, that is amazing. And it just makes you want to give back to everyone else. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to share, just about how amazing that, that all is. And that's the real... Um, point of developing on you know with the teachings and stuff because you want to get to the point when you're just in your passions all the time and you're helping others you you know going off doing all these other passions you're starting to realize you have and whilst at the same time like you've got God there and you're always you know connecting with God and all these other emotions start coming up and it, it is just the, the way of life basically it is yeah That's how it is. and another beautiful thing what happens when you start to express and show yourself is without kind of realizing you inspire others to want for them to want to be themselves as well and so as you kind of like it's like this buzzing feeling starts to happen um even like it's not like you're necessarily going out with the intention to inspire people but nick and i gratefully we receive a good handful of you know emails from people um saying to us how much they've we've inspired them and that was a, a shock for me i was like wow yeah. did i actually inspire someone how and when like, what, I mean, have I really what have I ever done in my life to inspire someone? <laughs> yeah. And then people are like, no, really, it's because you did this and you did this. And when you said this, and I'm just blown away by it because I'm just like, ah, oh, but I'm just being myself. So, um, so the beauty is being yeah. yourself will inspire others as well. And you can help people, you can help people just by being yourself. You don't have to, <laughs> there's, no, there's no magic trick to it. Yeah. So, um, and you never know who you're going to help and inspire and what's going on for them. That you could change their life in a massive way just by being you because that's through the law of attraction that's just what they needed at that moment in time yeah so um it's just it's just it's just amazing really it is yeah. it's it's the best it is the best yeah yeah well i think that's it isn't it that's what we wanted to share with people we today. did indeed yeah um, so um keep out we've got more videos coming yep and we've got a lot more material coming as well in terms of future events um, you can also, if you, we've got a new newsletter which is coming out, so if you want to subscribe to that, they can find it on the main Divine Truth Hub site. So um, you have to register separately on that main hub site to the forum. So if you're registered to the forum, you won't receive, you know, like email alerts from the main site, which is where we publish our um, newsletters. On there so if you do want to subscribe to our newsletters um, then you'd have to register to the main site and then you just get these standard email alerts just saying that there's a new post basically um, so yeah if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing or what events we've got coming up then um, then yeah I'd say uh, register um, you know and it's, it's about you expressing your desire to um, kind of see what's going on you know we're not it's not like we're just like mass emailing people about what we're doing and stuff. It's people have to opt in first to get the information, and we we've, we've realised that's the loving way to do things. And it's not about uh, being desperate for getting people to come, so then you start feeling you've got some worth. It's about doing it in harmony with God's principles and the principles of divine truth, and then it works out in the best possible way. Like we start realising. Um, so so yeah, that's. Um, an important thing that you've brought up there. About you, can, the uh, you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel as well and you'll get updated when we do new videos. And um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed 
video today and hopefully it was of help and I will see you next time. Thanks everyone. Thanks.